All right, in this video, we will continue our review of right triangle trigonometry. Our, uh, we will knock out a few problems where we quickly find the missing angle when we're given the sine, the cosine, or the tangent answer. And then we'll get into a thought question and a word problem. All right, but first, let's quickly knock out these um, finding of the angle questions. Nearest tenth of a degree, it says. All right, if you have the sine of an angle and you want to find the angle, uh, you're going to need to use the inverse trig function. So the angle is going to equal the inverse sine of 0.45. And you can just put that in your calculator. So inverse sine, second sine, 0.45. So that is 26.7 degrees. Okay, so the measure of angle A is 26.7 degrees. Did I say that right? Okay, so that's how all of these are going to work. So for number 20, we're given the tangent. If I want the angle, I will have to use the inverse tangent. So inverse tangent of 0.9. All right, so second tangent for inverse tangent of 0.9. That's 41.98 degrees. Got to round this up, all right? But if you round up a 9, you got to round up the previous number as well. So look at this like a 19. So that's going to round up to 20. So this is really going to round up to 42.0. Okay, so the measure of angle A would be uh, 42.0 degrees. Okay, number 21. If you're given the sign and you want the angle, then you will use the inverse sign. So I'll do the inverse sign of 0.76. That is 49.5 degrees. All right, number 22. If you're given the cosine and you want to find the angle, you're going to have to use the inverse cosine. So the inverse cosine of 0.32. seventy one point three degrees okay you can't skip this blue step by the way do not just put it in your calculator and just write down the answer alright if you're missing the blue step the setup the inverse part you're losing points alright let's knock out the rest of these easy easy problems all right, these are not much of a challenge, so uh, kind of making me yawn. I'm hoping uh, the other problems will be a little bit more uh, challenging, more interesting. Um, so when you're given the tangent and you want to find the angle, you will use the inverse tangent. All right, 79.1 degrees. All right, if you're given the cosine and you want to find the angle, you have to do the inverse cosine.
76.1 degrees. All right, again, do not skip the blue step. All right, the blue step must be shown. All right, two more of these simple, simple problems. If you're given the sign of the angle and you want to find the angle, you're going to need to do the inverse sign. eight point six degrees okay uno mas one more if you're given the cosine of an angle and you want to find the angle you could use the inverse cosine okay The measure of angle A forty-eight point seven degrees. Okay. All right, two more problems. All right, hopefully these will be a little bit more of a challenge. We'll put a little thought into it, maybe. Multiple choice. Using the diagram at the right, for what value of x does the sine of angle A equal the cosine of angle A? Okay, um, well, let's think about that. All right, what value of x? All right, let's talk about the sine of angle A and the cosine of angle A. All right, let's pretend that we do not know what angle X is right away. Um, so, let's have some variables in here. Um, I'm going to call this B, and I'm going to call this A, and I'm going to call this C for now. Okay, um, we want to know what value would cause the sine and cosine of angle A to be equal. All right, well, the sine of angle A, okay, right here, sine is um, opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, so keeping that in mind, the sine of this angle would be opposite over hypotenuse. So that would be, in this case, A over C. Okay. Um, now the cosine of angle A, because that's what we're supposed to find. We need the sine and the cosine to somehow be the same. So let's see what the cosine would be. The cosine of angle A would be adjacent over hypotenuse. So that would be B over C. So, comparing these two, somehow these two need to be the same. Um, so look, we have A over C, and we have B over C. Well, the denominators are already the same. So if these two are going to be the same, then somehow the numerators need to be the same too. All right, we need A and B to be the same thing. Like, in other words, instead of being A and B, um, imagine that they were both N. Okay, if they were the same thing. If these were the same thing, um, then that would, instead of A and B, that would make these both be N over C. And now the sine and cosine would be the same. That's the only way. So what angle would cause these to be the same? Yeah, well, if we remember anything about our special triangles, or even if we don't, if these are the same, this is an isosceles triangle. And if this is isosceles, that means that these two angles would have to be the same. And they have to be complementary as well. Got to add up to 90. The only way that's going to happen, all right, and be isosceles like this, 
is if you have 45 and 45. That's the only way they can be the same and add up to 90 degrees. So, for the sine and cosine to be the same, um, it had to be a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Which makes sense because it's um, the pattern that we memorized for a 45, 45 triangle is um, leg, leg, leg radical 2. So we knew these would be the same. So um, that's why the answer would have to be B. All right, the angle would have to be 45 degrees. Okay, so that made us think a little bit. So that was a little bit of a thought question. All right, I always find it more interesting when it's a challenge. Now, last problem, a word problem. Uh, we've got a ladder. You lean a 20-foot ladder against a house. Okay, as shown. Okay, the base of the ladder is four feet from the wall. Okay, I see that right there. What angle theta does the ladder make with the ground? Okay, so the key is I'm trying to find angle theta. So um, because they drew the picture for us so well and labeled everything, um, this isn't actually that much of a word problem. All right, uh, as soon as we see, okay, we're looking for angle theta, um, we don't really need to know that it was a house and a ladder and all this. All right, it's, the challenge is usually setting up the picture properly and putting all the numbers in the right place. Okay, so um, maybe we'll look forward to a more challenging problem another time. Um, but for right now, let's decide which trig function this is going to be. We have the 4 and the 20 from the angle. Okay, well, first of all, are either one of these the hypotenuse? Well, yeah, all right, see the 90 degrees? This 20 uh, is the hypotenuse. All right, so that leaves the 4. Is this the adjacent leg or is it the opposite leg? Uh, this is adjacent, right? From the theta, it's right there. It's, it's real close, so that's adjacent. Opposite would have been over here. So this helps me know which trig function I'm going to use because I have adjacent and hypotenuse. Hmm. That's the cosine function. So you set it up. All right, and you say the cosine of theta, always got to put something there, always the angle, whether you know it or not. Cosine, that's adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's 4 over 20. And we want to find theta. Well, we didn't we just do six of these a minute ago? All right, if you're given the tangent, sine, or cosine, and you want to find the angle, you use the inverse trig function. So in this case, I'm going to use the inverse cosine. All right, if I want to find theta, so theta will equal the inverse cosine of 4 over 20. And yes, I could have reduced that to one-fifth. So that is giving me 78.5 degrees. Got to round up. All right, and that is it. And that's going to be the end of this video. I hope this was helpful for you guys, and uh, I will see you on the next video.